Hey, welcome back to Underground Pulse, undergroundpulse.net. I am Jerrica J. I'm Jilly. And I'm Big Amish. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little slice of music that was Sunshine and Bullets with their song Believe. Right now, we have what everybody has been waiting for all day. Uh, John LeCompte, very good friend of ours, is on the phone. Uh, they are debuting their new single, The Dream, uh, with his new project, Even Devils Die. John, how are you, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. So everybody's been waiting for this, man. That's awesome. I, I know <laughs> I have. Oh, definitely. As soon as I heard your name, I went, yes. Oh. I know I've been waiting for it, too. I've had it done for a while. <laughs> now, uh, the last time we saw you, uh, you were actually on tour with Machina, and you came through Kansas City and played at Aftershock. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, if my information is right, it was that tour with Machina where you guys hooked up with Rachel, who's your new lead singer. Is that right? That's correct. Um, we were out just doing a small tour and a few things that we had going on at the time that put us in the same venue as her band. And I just remember, um, you know, we were like unloading our equipment in the front door or, or, or right in the little foyer there so that we could, uh, so that we could break it all up and stuff. And, um, I heard this, this voice. I'm like, what is going on here? So I walk over there. Cause usually I try to watch all the local bands that play whenever they open for us and stuff. Mm-hmm. And but we were breaking our equipment down, and it's just like, yeah, we were we were all just like floored at how awesome she was. I was like, wow, I'm I'm gonna have to get her number and save that for the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been uh, big fans of hers for a long time. We've had her uh, her band Downfall Rising before, and she's a phenomenal vocalist. I'm really happy to see you guys working together. Um, I know Rachel has a couple of questions regarding the female aspect, uh, just because of past history. So I'm gonna let her take uh, this question for uh-huh. us. Oh yeah, I just I just had a few questions. Just as soon as your name came up, I knew exactly what I wanted to ask because your future bands and everything, or past bands that you've been in, have usually been female fronted. Is there a reason for that from your your point of view? Hey, is there a reason for what? I'm sorry, it kind uh, of cut out for. Sorry a for having a female fronted band. Um, there's not necessarily a reason for it. It's just that there's certain, you know, obviously I've been part of a few different projects. I mean, I've, I've actually started a couple of bands and, you know, uh, for the last month or last year or so, and they didn't pan out. And I had, you know, male singers and all that. So there's different music that I write for different things. But when I was writing this music, I had intended it to have a female vocal on it because I don't think it would accent the music that I was making. It's more of what we were doing when Rocky and I were writing and we were, we were the fallen, this is the kind of stuff that we were writing and I couldn't hear anything else over it, you know, female vocal wise but it wasn't like I was going to do a cow call and find a, a female vocalist I mean, I was actually writing the music before I intended on doing anything with it, it was just, it was kind of a no brainer, it wasn't going to be a male singer on this particular piece of music Right on um, Now, I uh... You, a couple years ago, you know, you went through a lot of press with some controversial uh, things happening with We Are the Fallen being a replacement for Evanescence and all that stuff. Now, I'm sure it's going to happen again. Is, is this kind of, is this the kind of music that maybe you guys wanted to do with Carly and it just wasn't available to happen? Well, I mean, the We Are the Fallen thing, you know, we, we did that record and, you know, we had a really, I mean, it's, and the band is not broken up. I mean, I want that people to know that. A lot of people ask if We Are the Fallen is broken up or whatever, but you know, we had a a very rough start with it because we intended on what we're doing. What we're doing with Even Devil's Die is releasing a song like every couple of months and just doing it ourselves and and leave all the label stuff out of it and all the politics and all the bullcrap out of it. But we kind of got tied back up in that machine because the labels were like coming at us and, and you know whining us and dining us and we fell for it again. Okay. And uh, it really made a believer out of me that that's not the way to go because I mean we just we got screwed. I mean we had so many good songs on that album that could have been singles and Universal totally screwed us and a lot of people involved just they lost heart in it because it wasn't the world wasn't being handed to us so to speak and uh, I, I'm, I'm here to work so you know Carly she has she has her career she has many things she has to do we all live in different geographic locations so everybody has their things that they have to do we all have things we want to do but I want to make this music and you know, if, if they're busy, then Rocky and I always are going to push forward and do what we have to do. So this very well could have been a weird, weird song song. I actually pitched it to Carly, but those people are just a little too busy. And uh, I want to make music, so. Absolutely. So you, you're still in multiple bands. Have you found it hard to try to schedule bands together, or do you take breaks to make time for others, or how do you work that? It simply comes down to uh, 
the same, pretty much same thing. Everybody lives in different places and doing different things. So if we focus on doing one, that's where we're going to put our focus at that time. I mean, you don't have to do everything at the same time. You can give it the attention it needs at the time that it needs it. Um, anybody that would try to accomplish multiple bands at exactly the same time, they would find out really quickly that you can't do that. It's totally impossible. And, uh, you know, things got to die down a little bit for every band. Something comes out and it's good and you ride that way for a little while and then, you know, if it dies down a little bit, you got some time to do something different. I mean, I have a lot of different things that I want to do, but she does like completely different from, from Evanescence or anything else that I've ever been a part of before. And I tried to start another band last year. I wrote some really cool songs for it. It's called Pistol and a Prayer. And, you know, I had probably found one of the most phenomenal singers in the world in Wichita. And, uh, we didn't end up fulfilling that, but it was a totally different kind of music. I mean, it's like, just depends on who I'm playing with. And, it, you know, I'll put, I'll put the effort whenever the time is right to do the thing. And right now, since December, I've been writing a lot of music that's this vein, what I'm doing right now. And even Devil's Dive, this is our time right now. This is what we're focusing on. Obviously, Rocky's in 20 other bands, but he somehow finds out how, how to make it work. I don't know how he did it. <laughs> He's inhuman. I've learned that, and I don't ask questions. <laughs> it's that big old pipe dream to be able to do everything at once, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when you're, like, you know, married and you have kids and grandkids and all that stuff. It makes it a lot harder. And uh, you guys don't actually stop at just being band members, you know. Uh, I know Rocky, he's not only in Living Sacrifice, but he also does graphic design, and I think he doesn't he have a T-shirt company, too. He did a long time ago. I don't know if he's still doing that, but uh, he started that a long ago. Yeah, he's he does hand in a lot of stuff. I mean, he's actually in my in my house right now. We're tracking drums for a new song right now. Um, for even Neville die and doing some other studio projects because I run a studio and I do production and he he runs his studio and he does production. He's my studio guy. So when I need drums put on something, I call him and he comes over here and knocks it out. But yeah, he's he's got a lot of lot of stuff going on. You got to work. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> I was I was actually going to ask you about Red Room. Uh, is this is that where you guys recorded the dream? Yeah, everything everything on there was recorded except for the vocals because Rachel lives in Texas, and I just had her you know go to the studio that she's comfortable with there in Texas and track her vocal and just send me the, the raw files to do all the mixing and tricks and wizardry with. <laughs> now talking about recording, we we kind of had an interesting conversation uh, with a few bands at Rocklahoma over how they decide what songs they put on their albums how do you how do you go through that process well right now we're going to go through, go through the process of not having an album <laughs> <laughs> uh, um but you know in in, in the past it, like with evanescence and stuff i mean there there were always strong enough songs to make the record and there's always a few things that didn't necessarily make the cut but I think the only time when I was in that band, things didn't make the cut is they ended up getting put on, on like B-sides and stuff anyway, so they ended up getting put out anyways, but The Open Door had like four or five songs I think that will never be heard. They were actually pretty good, but yeah, you, you, they're all like your children, you know, you don't know which one to pick, but mm -hmm. Machina, Machina was, I, don't, I think there's only two songs that we didn't put on that record, the only reason why is because there's just too many songs for a record. Um, we are the fallen. We had a lot of songs, and a lot of ideas. So the, the, I guess the how we did that one was how how did it flow? You know, because we kind of put them in an order and listened to them in a playlist and go right, how to just flow into this. Because it, you know, that record was more of a. I'm not into the whole co concept thing like Tool or or other bands, but that record was a little more conceptual just because we wanted it to feel a certain way, like a roller coaster from beginning to end, and we feel like we put it together pretty well. And I, I love that. Uh, personally, that record is, is one of my favorites that I can listen just from front to back and then do it all over again. And uh, Rachel and I, we have a love for those kind of albums, so we really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I, I love that album. That's I, that's one of the shiningest moments in my career, um, doing that album, is getting back in there with Ben and like doing what we wanted to do before he left. If, you know, if... You know, because we had talked a lot about where we wanted it to go when we were in the band together, and then obviously he left, and then we stayed, and then we left, and here we all are in, out in the world, and we decided to come together, and you know, I was like, wow, let's do that thing that we talked about before, and I think that's why we were the following such a special record, because it was exactly what we wanted to do. Even though we were involved with the label, um, 
they weren't involved until we were done with the album. So we did everything we wanted to do. And I think we know what we're doing. We don't need someone to sit there and tell us, you need a song like this, you need to do this or that. We mm-hmm. just did it, you know. Well, that's great. And I, I hope that that continues. I hope to see you guys on stage. But I, I'm seriously excited about Even Devils Die. Uh, you know, I listened to The Dream this morning, and I just, it sounds like darker and dirtier to me, and I, I fell in love with it. Um, well, you you get it then, because that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's definitely what it is. I didn't want it to be, like, super polished. I mean, yeah, it's it's the first song that I've ever done, especially out of my home and in my own little humble studio that I have. And I think it was, like, 78 tracks on that song. And I've never wow. recorded that stuff on a song. And, you know, it was, like, everything in the kitchen sink. But it wasn't to do that. It just, that, it just kept growing and growing and growing. And now it's, it is what it is, and it's a beautiful song. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> now, uh, what do you guys have planned from here? Are you guys going to record more? Are you guys going to go out on a tour? Or what do you guys have chalked up? We This whole this whole thing, what we're doing is Rocky and I, we, we're older fellows, and we've got a lot of wisdom now, and we've been through a lot. And it's something that we've always said in our band, Messina, is that we pay dues that people don't even know exist. We've been involved with con men, people trying to take advantage of our talent. Um, uh, anything you can think of. I mean, you, you would not believe if I came out with like an autobiography about what we've been through, you would go, no way that this is all true. But it is. So that puts us in a position where we are now, Rocky and I. Like, If it ain't easy, it doesn't need to be done. And we work well together. We work easy together. We don't spend... Uh, you know, two weeks just getting the snare to sound right or whatever. We just write music. We record it until we're happy with it. And we want to give it to the world. So we'll do that at our leisure because we are family men and we do have to make money and we have jobs. So there's no, there's no pressure to let's do a whole album. Let's get a whole album of music done and then release it because that puts so much pressure on you. And then it's like, okay, you have to go do a tour. Well, there's only three people involved in the band. So. I have to hire another, we have to hire a drummer because Rocky decided he wanted to play guitar in this band because we've never played guitar together in a band before. So he decided he wanted to do that and he's a fantastic guitar player Mm -hmm. as well. So, you know, we'd have to like, we'd have to employ a a drummer and a bass player. So that's a lot of stuff that you gotta, you gotta put forth. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes money and you gotta put so much focus into it, it just becomes your whole life and you can't really enjoy it anymore. So, we're going to write songs, we're going to record them, and us going out and going on tour is purely based on the fans, if they if they live up to what we need them to live up to to go do that. Instead of jumping in a band and try to go play a bunch of places and, and pay for a bunch of guys, lose a bunch of money, and a bunch of time to maybe do it. I think we have enough of a pedestal with our, our fan base from our previous band, and Rachel's been a downfall right and she has a huge fan base. That if we can build that fan base in the DIY way that we're doing it right now, then if it gets big enough and then we know the fans are going to be there, then we'll go do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I can, I can tell you right now that if, if I have anything to do with it, <laughs> uh, you guys will be in Kansas City eventually. <laughs> sure. Well, don't get me wrong. I'd love to do it. I mean, it's been, <laughs> it's been a really long time since I've been on stage. I mean, the last concert that I actually played on stage in, you know, the full band setting, was Machina when we went to Japan and it was amazing and that's been oh probably nearly a year ago now I mean it's been a long time I need to get on stage I lived there you know <laughs> that was my thing for many years and now I'm a studio guy so yeah I need to get back to it and I think I don't know something just feels very special and perfect about this the way that it started um you know it, it was conceived in my brain this whole thing is conceived in my brain I I front the back really just wrote all the guitars and everything to uh, the dream and Rocky came in and did what he does on drums and he had so many things to, to put into it like what he wanted it to sound like which was completely different from what I thought about and, and it, you know, it kind of chafed me a little bit because I'm like oh that's not really what I had in mind but I'm like you know what you're, you're Rocky Grant and let you do what you do and, and it always turns out good when we do that and then Rachel oh my god I, I sent her a raw stereo track of it before it was just bass clicking, it was really rough, and I hadn't tracked the guitars properly. It was just, you know, front to back the song with some, you know, some fake drums on it and all that. And I was like, what do you got? And she sends it back to me like a couple hours later with scratch vocals that just blew me away. It didn't change. And then when she went to the studio, oh my God, she just <laughs> put 
so many layers of, of ideas and harmonies and things. There's there's nothing on there vocally that we called her and said, hey, you should do this or you should do that. Or we should, no, she just went and did it and sent it back to me and just blew me away, which was perfect for what we were trying to do because it was easy. It's like, this is the person who needs to do this? And then she totally confirmed that by sending just the most amazing vocal to us. Absolutely. Wow. I'm glad you're happy with her. <laughs> oh, I'm very happy with her. And she's, a, she's, she's such a nice person, too, man. I mean, I watch her on Facebook and we talk on the phone and stuff. And, you know, and I do love the fact that she is involved with this and she's involved in what we're doing. And a lot of people would be like, oh, my God, she's a happy series and they're famous and blah, blah, blah. And she, you know, pitched their band to the side. No, man, she's fully fall rising, which I want her to, that's, this is her life. That's her life right there. I don't want to come in and get in the way of that at all. I even gave her the warning of, if you start playing with us, man, people are going to start comparing you to Amy Lee. If you if you touch, if you even look at a corset, people are going to go off on you. <laughs> but, uh, She's already, she was already hearing courses and stuff, so, and, and I just let her know. I mean, I, I had an original idea to just let her be a mystery singer until the fans, like, behave themselves. If they could behave themselves, and would reveal who she is. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, you know what? I'm tough. I can handle it. I'm all right. I believe you. And, and she, I believe she is tough enough to handle it. I don't think uh, any of that negative, because that negative stuff is going to come. It's going to be there. People are stupid. I believe that. Um... <laughs> A lot of people aren't, but a lot of people are. I mean, you're going to get to be good with the bad, and yep. she definitely got, she's got the bravery to, to jump in the bed with us, and like, oh, we're going to do it right, you know. <laughs> oh, so many visuals. That's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, well, when you guys decide to start looking for a tour, you need to hit up Surrender the Fall, because Jared said his dream tour or show would be to have a show with her. Yeah. So, that, that, that'd would, be amazing. Well, and, and obviously we have we have to write enough music to do a tour as well. So <laughs> obviously, <laughs> it is our plan to you know a song maybe every month and a half to two months. So you know if you look at it like that, it'll be next year before we're ready to even do that because there's no way we could play long enough to actually go do anything real. Oh come right. on! You could tour in one song. You oh, could yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to set up all my guitar stuff for one song. That is so much crap. Uh, I would be. I would be amazed. I'd pay good money for that one song. Hey, but, uh, didn't um, Zach Meyer from Shinedown just do a tour with Heather? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. You well, you know, there's always the the throwing the cover into the set. That was one of the. The great things about We Are the Fallen is that we picked a couple of really cool covers to do our way. And that was always fun to do. Like we did Flight of Icarus by Iron Maiden and we did uh, Several Ways by Journey, um, Like a Picture by Madonna. But by, in no way, shape, or form do I want to throw in like 10 covers, you know? <laughs> right, right. Uh, now, uh, I don't want to try to up on the phone because I know you got family and stuff to do. Uh, I know that you guys are going to be recording. I'm very excited. I'm sorry. I'm. We're going to be taking a trip down to Arkansas pretty soon. Uh, we'd love to come hang out with you if the time is available. Uh, come, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I like it. But uh, I know. You, I mean, I just. I'm looking forward to you guys being on tour. Normally, you know, this is the time we talk about touring and you know the websites and stuff like that. But I know you guys just released a single. Uh, for those of you that are just joining us, we are talking to John Lacan from Even Devils Die. Uh, they just released their brand new single, The Dream. It's on iTunes. It's in all of the major. Is it just online retail stores, John? Yes, it is. There are no hard copies of anything yet. And, and you know, ultimately, when we do have enough music to make a full record out of, there will be a full album download, and I'm sure we'll make a physical copy because we love that and we miss we miss that about the music industry. And, and you know, people like to have something in their hand. I mean, I, I signed so many Evanes Evanescent CD covers, and you know, that was probably like the last big bubble before everything popped. Like we we just happened to be riding that last little wave where people actually bought the CD just so they have it in their hand and maybe they might get to see you and get you to sign it or whatever you know now it's just like oh let me steal it or let me download it yeah it's ridiculous it's it's a sad sad fact we actually we talk about that a lot because rachel and i we like uh we love cd inserts uh, especially ones yeah. with lyrics on them so, <laughs> so hint, hint. yeah absolutely. <laughs> hint hint put lyrics in your sheets <laughs> but uh no that's a great thing and I i'm glad that you feel that way uh i'm sincerely looking forward to all of your guys' new product uh and again you guys i can't stress enough to our listeners that are, are hearing this 
uh, please go and support these guys. They're fantastic musicians. Um, they could probably outplay anybody I know, to be honest. Oh, uh, oh thank you. I do got one more question, and it does go back. To, um, what really made Rocky decide to play guitar? Because for those of the, the people that are listening that just know you guys from Evanescence and We Are the Fallen, Rocky has always been the drummer. Uh, not a lot of people have lived in, listened to Living Sacrifice, but what made him want to play guitar in this band? Well, that's that's what it pretty much came down to is is that we've been oh shoot I played with I played guitar with him in Soul Embrace a long long time ago. Um, we had a band called Kill System where I was just a singer. He was playing guitar there, but I was just I was a singer. We weren't playing the guitar together. And Rocky, if anyone doesn't know, is like Don Bag Daryl good. He is so <laughs> freaking good. And all, also with Evanescence and We're the Fallen, I did on We're the Fallen. I did you know play some lead stuff but i'm not i'm not that guy i'm just i'm just not that guy i play stuff that's, that's tasteful and you know it's just it's in, within my limitations what i can do and he's like dude if we're gonna do this maybe we need to throw some like serious solos in it because we've done this music before with never really done those kind of solos so he wants to do some of that and he's a great songwriter he's a great guitar player as far as uh writing riffs and writing songs I mean, the dude is super talented he's he is the iron to my sword man he, he's <laughs> sharpened me he has sharpened me over the years. He was always there, right behind me when I was playing in F. If I made a mistake, I knew that was the one guy I could look back at and he'd shake his head like, "Man, come on!" <laughs> you know. Darn and it, John. So, so you know, and, and he's such a good songwriter. It makes me write songs better. It makes me be a better guitar player. So with us playing guitar together, that's going to help me step up my game a little bit. And really, that's that's what it came down to. It's just a camaraderie thing. Like, hey, man, let's do this. We've never done this together, so let's do that. We actually were uh, about 30 minutes ago. We were working on this new song, and he was like, he had an idea. He was like, why don't we, you know, think about since we are just going to be this core group of people, having different drummers come in and play on it instead of him playing on everything. Which, you know, it may or may not happen, but we know a lot of people in the industry that we've made friends with, and you know, we could get a whole bunch of guest drummers to play on different songs. And it'd be you know, that'd be a cool little selling point. Hey, we got Troy Lucetta from Tesla yeah. playing on this song, or whatever. I mean, we. Uh, oh, your phone's um, breaking up a little bit there, bud. I'm sorry. Oh, that's uh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I live out in the country. <laughs> I live out in the country, man. It's, I'm so far out. I gotta stay away from everybody. They'll come find me. Ah, sweet little compilation album sounds pretty good, though. I th I think that sounds like a plan. <laughs> yeah, it'd be pretty cool. It'd be pretty cool. Awesome, awesome. Well, John, uh, be sure to give Rocky our love for us. And uh, I'm actually going to be talking to Rachel soon. Been trying to get her up to Kansas City for a while now. <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure she'll give you a good interview, man. She's a professional. She oh, so she's awesome. amazing. She's such a sweetheart. And I know it, man. She's, uh, I, I'm, I feel humbled and blessed. I mean, I've actually sent her many text messages of thank you for this. You know, <laughs> I'm very excited to be part of something and, and not look at it from the perspective of how big is it going to be? Is it what I want to do because it's going to be, you know, on top of everything? No, it's just supposed to do it because it's going to be, it's going to be fun to do and we can make some music and hopefully people like it. I, well, we enjoy it and it's good to see such a good team working together. Um, all right, I'm going to let you go, John, and uh, next time I talk to you, it'll hopefully be at a bar in Arkansas having a very nice brew. Uh, <laughs> Sounds good. We'll go get a growler. Oh, yes, very, very much so. All right, you guys, uh, all right. for those of you that are listening, this is John LeCon from Even Devils Die. This is their song, The Dream. It is brand new. Thank you guys for tuning in. We will be back with uh, 3 p.m. live on air, so stay tuned. We'll talk to you soon.
Take the chance